Welcome. Today's video is about everybody's favorite hot goth chick. Okay, maybe second favorite. I think Liliana's probably first. Ghoul caller Gisa, though, is who we're here to talk about. She is beautiful yet crazy. She's a necromancer that doesn't really care for formality and is less concerned with what she's raising from the dead as she is with getting usefulness out of it and then discarding it at will. Funny I should mention that because that's exactly what you'll be doing with the two commander decks that we're going to talk about today. The two commander decks are really one and the same. Rather, that is to say, it was a deck that was initially $35 to build that has since been added to. At this point, I have swapped out about 40-some cards, usually for more efficient versions of cards that were already in the deck, but some of the cards didn't even exist at the time of my initial build on this. And to give credit where credit is due, this comes to us from budget MTG decks. Man, I love and miss those guys, and I am constantly still referring people to their channel. We're going to start with a look at 10 cards that I think are important to this deck that have swapped out and changed. Maybe not the most important, but they were important to me for one reason or another. Then we'll look at, I'll tell you where to find both the original deck and the original video. And we'll end by going over a few combos that could be added to this deck to make it a effective killing and resurrecting machine. So the first of the cards that I'm going to go through here in no particular order is Ether Snap. For two black, three colorless, you get to remove all counters from all permanents and exile all tokens. While that first ability to remove counters from permanents is important to me since I hate planeswalkers, though I play them myself, I know I'm a hypocrite, the thing that was really important to me was exiling all tokens. I found myself at the mercy of a Platinum Angel token that I could not interact with. This was the only way I was able to clear the field and clear my way to victory. Bubbling Muck is another card that is useful when you need to squeeze out that extra mana. I myself am guilty of rushing plays and not waiting until you know later in the game because i never feel like i'm going to get to the middle of the game sometimes anyway at least that's how i was feeling initially bubbling muck does give everybody else a chance to tap into that extra mana from swamps but since you plan for it it works out more for you than it does everybody else these next two cards might seem like auto includes and in fact they were when these cards became available to me i quickly added them to the deck those two cards are Diabolic Tutor and Demonic Tutor. Opened those in a couple of packs, was able to add them to the deck just to make it a little bit more efficient. The next card that I'd like to show off here is Dark Ritual. Not just because that's an ad for my store, Dark Ritual on TCG Player, and it's the one in California. Anyhow, no, the reason I'm actually showing this off is because it was a gift to me from a new friend that I met playing Magic who knew that I had taken a hiatus from Magic for a while, or maybe he didn't know. Anyhow, this card comes from a set when I wasn't currently playing, so the artwork was new to me. I thought it was cool. I'm just making up an excuse to show it off. Anyhow, getting back to the cards that I did swap into the deck, Filth. I always believe that the elementals, or rather the incarnations, have a place in any and every deck. The fact that this gives you Swamp Walk is priceless. Another card that is a late addition to this deck is Liliana Heretic Healer. And also, I added a Mask of Grizzlebrand. Soulless One seems like another auto-include that when I came across it, I felt like needed to go into the deck, as well as the Undead War Chief. This allows me not only to have a Zombie Lord in the deck that adds 2-1, it also makes those zombie cards that much cheaper. 
And we'll finish off these top 10, or these 10 cards that I've swapped out, by talking about Victimize. A useful but effective way to take advantage of Ghoul Caller Geese's abilities. Now, a little bit more about why this deck was so vitally important to me. It came along at a time when I was very dissatisfied with Commander. It felt like I never won a game. It felt like I was constantly being outmatched and outclassed by people with deep pockets and better, more expensive decks than I had. This deck showed me none of that matters. For, at the time... $35, I was able to get a simple synergistic deck that turned my losing streak 180 degrees in the opposite direction, giving me several wins against what arguably were much more powerful or realistically just more expensive decks. And you can't beat that. At this point, this deck goes for about $60 if you were to build the initial build of it and you can find that at budget mtg decks and i will include that link in the show notes down below the current version that i'm running is about 260 dollars i can assure you i did not i repeat i did not pay that much for it i've had the advantage of collecting and playing on and off over the last 30 years pretty much since uh revised so yeah i have a lot of cards i have a lot of junk laying around that uh is being sorted through right now and so this deck did not cost me that much but it is a suitable deck for somebody that's new getting into the game looking at this deck there are three combos which are good inclusions for this deck the prices may vary on them when you find the appropriate time or money. Getting a Gravecrawler and a Phyrexian Altar is a simple combo to assemble within this deck. Mercatus of the Unhallowed, Plague Belcher, and Phyrexian Altar, another great combo for this deck. And since you're already playing Ghoul Caller Gisa, a Thornbite Staff combined with that Phyrexian Altar and a Lord of the Accursed gives you another awesome combo to work with. Both versions of this deck can be found on Moxfield. If you go to search Mad Saxon and look up the decks, Old G and New G are the decks respectively. One is the $35 original budget deck, which now goes for about $60, and the other is my $260 version of the deck, which, again, I assure you, I did not pay that much for. Anyhow, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was somewhat instructive, or if not uh, helpful at least. And please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for your support. Mm -hmm.